What if I told you that someone just figured out how to make 8,000 AI chips scattered across 160 server cabinets, work together as if they were a single computer? Not just connected, not just networked, but actually thinking as one unified brain. Now, before you say that's impossible, and because trust me, I had the same reaction. This isn't science fiction. This is exactly what Huawei demonstrated at Huawei Connect 2025. And honestly, the implications are absolutely wild. See, here's the thing about AI computing that most people don't realize. When you hear about these massive AI models being trained, GPT, Claude, whatever, they're not running on one computer. They're running on thousands of chips spread across entire data centers. And the problem? Getting all those chips to actually work together efficiently has been one of the biggest unsolved challenges in the AI industry. Until now, apparently. Because what Huawei just unveiled isn't just an incremental improvement. It's a fundamental rethinking of how we architect AI infrastructure. And whether you love them or hate them, whether you think they can actually pull this off or not, and we'll get into the skepticism, don't worry. You need to understand what's happening here. Because this isn't just about technology. This is about geopolitics, about China's push for technological independence, about a three-year plan to challenge NVIDIA's absolute dominance in AI chips, and the stakes? They couldn't be higher. So, buckle up. We're about to dive deep into superpods, optical interconnects, and why connecting AI chips is way harder than you think. All right, let's start with the basics. Because to understand why what Huawei did is significant, you first need to understand the problem they're solving. When you're training a massive AI model, we're talking about models with billions or trillions of parameters, you can't do it on a single chip. It's just not possible. The model is too big, the calculations are too complex, and the memory requirements are absolutely insane. So what do you do? You split the work across multiple chips. But here's where things get tricky. These chips need to talk to each other, constantly. They're exchanging weights, gradients, activation values, millions of parameters flying back and forth at speeds that make your home internet look like a carrier pigeon. And every time there's a delay in that communication, every time a message gets lost or corrupted, the entire training process slows down. Or worse, it breaks entirely. Now, the traditional way to connect these chips has been with copper cables, high bandwidth copper connections that can move data fast. But there's a catch, distance. Copper cables only work reliably over short distances. We're talking maybe connecting two server cabinets, three if you're lucky. Beyond that, the signal degrades, interference kicks in, and your connection becomes unreliable. So what about fiber optics? Surely that's the solution, right? Well, yes and no. Optical cables can span longer distances. They can connect dozens or even hundreds of cabinets. But optical connections have their own problems and reliability issues that get worse as you scale up. The more optical modules you have, the more chances for intermittent disconnections. And in AI training, even a microsecond of disconnection can cascade into a major problem. This is what engineers call the interconnect bottleneck, and it's been limiting the scale of AI systems for years. You can build faster chips, add more memory, optimize your algorithms, but if you can't get the chips to communicate efficiently, you hit a wall. Eric Shu, Huawei's deputy chairman, put it perfectly when he said that solving these fundamental connectivity challenges was essential to their AI infrastructure strategy. Because without solving this, everything else is just incremental improvements. And that brings us to what Huawei actually built. So how did Huawei solve the interconnect bottleneck? With something they call Unified Bus 2.0. And before your eyes glaze over at another technical protocol name, stay with me because this is where it gets really interesting. Yang Chaobin, Huawei's CEO of their ICT business group, described Unified Bus as creating a single logical server from thousands of physical servers. They can learn, think, and reason as one. Now, that sounds like marketing speak, but there's actual engineering substance behind it. Here's what they did. Instead of treating reliability as an afterthought, something you patch on later with redundancy and error correction, they built it into every layer of their interconnect protocol from the bottom up. Zhu broke this down using the OC model. That's the seven layer framework that describes how networking works. He said they built reliability into the physical layer, the data link layer, the network layer, and the transmission layer, four layers of redundancy and fault tolerance. But here's the kicker, they achieved 100 nanosecond fault detection and protection switching. 100 nanoseconds. That's so fast that if an optical cable has an intermittent disconnection or a module fails, the application layer doesn't even notice. The switch happens faster than the system can detect there was ever a problem. 
Think about that for a second. They've made optical interconnects as reliable as copper, but with the distance advantages of fiber. That's the breakthrough. That's what changes everything. Because now you can take thousands of chips, spread them across dozens or hundreds of cabinets, connect them with optical fiber, and they work together as seamlessly as if they were on the same motherboard. You've eliminated the distance limitation without sacrificing reliability. And this isn't just theoretical. The Unified Bus Protocol maintains what Huawei claims is 2.1 microsecond latency across the entire system. For context, that's about 50 times faster than a typical network round-trip time. It's fast enough that the chips can coordinate complex operations in real time without the delays that normally cripple distributed systems. Now, you might be wondering, is this actually revolutionary or is Huawei just really good at marketing? And that's a fair question. We'll get to the skepticism, but first, let's look at what they built with this technology. Okay, so let's talk numbers. Because the Atlas 950 Superpod, that's the flagship implementation of this unified bus architecture, has specifications that honestly sound absurd. Up to 8,192 Ascend 950 DT chips, that's 8,192 individual AI processors, all connected through this unified bus protocol, all working as one unified system. The computational power, 8 exaflops in FP8 precision, 16 exaflops in FP4. Now, if you're not familiar with flops, that's floating point operations per second. An exaflop is a quintillion operations per second. We're talking about numbers so large they're hard to conceptualize. But here's the stat that really made me stop and reread the source material. The interconnect bandwidth, that's how fast data moves between all these chips, is 16 petabytes per second. And according to Xu, that's 10 times higher than the entire globe's peak internet bandwidth. Let me repeat that. A single Atlas 950 Superpod can move data internally faster than the entire internet at peak capacity. That's... That's insane. The physical footprint is equally massive. This thing occupies 160 cabinets spread across 1,000 square meters. That's about 10,000 square feet, roughly the size of a large house. You've got 128 compute cabinets doing the actual processing, and 32 communications cabinets handling all that optical interconnect we talked about. Everything linked together with all optical connections. Memory capacity? 1,152 terabytes. That's over a petabyte of memory, accessible by any of those 8,192 chips, with only microseconds of latency. But wait, it gets better. Or bigger, I should say, because the Atlas 950 is just the beginning. Huawei has already announced the Atlas 960 Superpod, slated for later in their production pipeline. This thing scales up to 15,488. Ascend 960 chips across 220 cabinets covering 2,200 square meters. The computational power? 30 exaflops in FP8, 60 exaflops in FP4. Memory capacity jumps to 4,460 terabytes. That's 4.46 petabytes. And the interconnect bandwidth hits 34 petabytes per second. These numbers are so large they almost lose meaning. But here's what they translate to in practical terms. You could potentially train some of the largest AI models in existence on a single superpod without needing to distribute the work across multiple data centers. You could run inference on models so large that right now they're barely feasible. You could experiment with architectures that are currently impossible because the communication overhead would be too high. Now, there's a question we need to address. How does this compare to NVIDIA? Because that's the elephant in the room, right? And this is where things get... complicated. Here's where the story takes a fascinating turn. Because Huawei isn't just building this technology for themselves, they're open sourcing it. The Unified Bus 2.0 technical specifications? open standards, the hardware designs, being released, the software stack, fully open source by December 31st, 2025. Now, why would a company do this? Why would you invest billions in developing breakthrough technology and then just give it away? Yang Xiaobin framed it as ecosystem building. He said, 
We are committed to our open hardware and open source software approach that will help more partners develop their own industry scenario-based SuperPood solutions. The goal is to accelerate developer innovation and foster a thriving ecosystem. But let's be real here. There's another reason, a reason that Xu himself acknowledged directly. China is behind in semiconductor manufacturing. He said it plainly. The Chinese mainland will lag behind in semiconductor manufacturing process nodes for a relatively long time. They can't compete with TSMC's 3 nanometer process or whatever cutting-edge node NVIDIA is using for their latest chips. The manufacturing technology just isn't there yet. So what do you do when you can't compete on process node? When your chips will inevitably be less power efficient and less performant at the individual chip level? You compete on architecture, you compete on scale, you compete on how you connect those chips together, and you build an ecosystem. You make it easy for other Chinese companies, companies that are also facing restrictions on accessing NVIDIA hardware, to build AI infrastructure using domestic technology. You create an alternative supply chain that doesn't depend on American semiconductors or American export controls. This is strategic on a level that goes way beyond technology. This is about creating technological independence. The open source commitment includes NPU modules, air-cooled and liquid-cooled blade servers, AI cards, CPU boards, cascade cards, basically all the building blocks you need to construct your own AI infrastructure. On the software side, they're open sourcing Kanen compiler tools, the Mind Series application kits, and even their Open Pangu Foundation models. And it's already working. Over 300 Atlas 900A3 SuperPod units have shipped in 2025. More than 20 customers across internet services, finance, telecommunications, electricity, and manufacturing have deployed these systems. Real world usage, real world validation. But now we need to talk about the skepticism because not everyone is convinced. Let's be brutally honest here. Announcing ambitious specifications is one thing. Delivering on them is another. And when it comes to competing with Nvidia, Huawei faces some serious headwinds. Analysts were quick to point out the limitations. Ching Yuan Lin from Bernstein said the roadmap shows a strong signal of confidence in China's local supply chain, but also underscored how far Huawei still lags behind Nvidia. The numbers tell a stark story. A single next-generation Ascend 950 chip delivers about 6% of the computing power of NVIDIA's upcoming VR200 superchip. 6%. That's... not great. And there are manufacturing challenges. Last year, Huawei tried to roll out the Ascend 910D on a 5 nanometer process. It collapsed due to poor yields. The chip simply couldn't be manufactured reliably at that node. Jeffrey's analyst called future chip releases uncertain because of these manufacturing constraints. This is the core problem. Without access to advanced chip-making equipment, equipment that's currently restricted by U.S. export controls, China faces massive obstacles in producing chips that can match NVIDIA's raw performance. So Huawei's strategy is essentially this. If we can't beat them on individual chip performance, we'll beat them on clustering efficiency. We'll connect more chips more efficiently and make up in scale what we lack in individual power. Does it work? Well, that's the billion-dollar question. While Huawei is mapping out their three-year roadmap, NVIDIA isn't standing still. They've unveiled the Rubin CPX platform, launching in 2026, built for massive context AI tasks. They signed a letter of intent with OpenAI for a partnership worth up to $100 billion, committing at least 10 gigawatts of compute capacity. They're securing millions of GPUs for one of the world's most prominent AI players. Meanwhile, the geopolitical landscape is shifting. Beijing has barred major Chinese firms, including ByteDance, owner of TikTok, from buying NVIDIA chips, even the ones specifically designed for the Chinese market. It's a clear signal, develop domestic alternatives or nothing, and Huawei has seen success. Their work with Zhejiang University on the DeepSeq R1 safe model used Ascend processors for training. Chinese officials point to this as proof that local chips can replace NVIDIA. But here's the thing. The AI chip market isn't zero-sum. 
There's room for multiple approaches, multiple architectures. NVIDIA dominates because they were first and they're currently the best, but best depends on your use case, your constraints, your access to technology. For Chinese companies that can't buy NVIDIA chips, and there are increasingly many of them, Huawei's SuperPod isn't competing against NVIDIA. It's competing against nothing. It's the only game in town, and that's actually a massive market. So where does all this leave us? What does Huawei's SuperPod architecture actually mean for the future of AI computing? First, it represents a fundamental rethinking of how we build AI infrastructure. The traditional approach has been to optimize individual chips, make them faster, more efficient, more powerful. But Huawei is saying, what if we optimize the connections instead? What if we make clustering so efficient that we can compete through scale? It's a different philosophy, and it might actually work. Not because their individual chips are better, they're not, but because their architecture might enable things that are difficult or impossible with current approaches. Second, this is about more than technology. This is about the fragmentation of the global tech ecosystem. For decades, we've had a relatively unified technology landscape. American chips, Taiwanese manufacturing, global markets. But export controls, trade restrictions, and strategic competition are creating parallel ecosystems. One based on Western technology, one based on Chinese alternatives. The Unified Bus 2.0 open source release is a bet that collaborative development can accelerate innovation in the Chinese ecosystem faster than proprietary development. It's a test of whether an open approach can compete against the closed, vertically integrated model that NVIDIA has perfected. Third, this matters for AI development broadly. If Huawei succeeds in making large-scale clustering efficient and affordable, it could democratize access to massive compute resources. Right now, training frontier models requires resources that only a handful of companies can afford, but more efficient clustering architectures could change that equation. And finally, this is a reminder that technological leadership isn't permanent. NVIDIA is dominant now, but dominance in technology is always temporary. New architectures emerge, new approaches become viable, Markets shift. Does Huawei's SuperPod pose an immediate threat to NVIDIA? Probably not. The performance gaps are real, the manufacturing challenges are real, and NVIDIA has years of software ecosystem advantages. But in five years? In ten? The landscape could look very different, because ultimately this story isn't about whether Huawei can match NVIDIA chip for chip. It's about whether a fundamentally different approach to AI infrastructure, one based on massive clustering, optical interconnects, and open collaboration, can create a viable alternative. And whether you think they'll succeed or fail, you have to admit, it's going to be fascinating to watch. So that's the story of Huawei's SuperPod architecture. A three-year plan to challenge NVIDIA, a technical breakthrough in chip interconnects, an open-source strategy that could reshape China's AI ecosystem, and a glimpse into how the future of AI computing might look very different from today. What do you think? Can Huawei actually pull this off? Is their clustering approach a viable alternative to NVIDIA's chip dominance? Or are the performance gaps just too large to overcome? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I'm genuinely curious what the community thinks about this, and if you found this deep dive valuable, hit that like button, and subscribe for more in-depth coverage of AI technology, chip wars, and the future of computing. This channel is all about breaking down complex tech developments in ways that actually make sense. Stay curious, stay skeptical, and keep learning.